fish less, catch more, bigger fish. I'm going to tell you a little story. But mind you, I strongly encourage you to take notes. Because time after time, I cannot tell you, once you figure out this formula, your catch ratio will increase tremendously. And I will tell you exactly what I do. I do not burn spots. There is absolutely no need to burn spots. You need to know what it takes to find that spot, that finite window. What I log, document, and it starts with tides. How many guys know about reading tides? Talk to me. Raise your hand, that's okay. Look around you guys. Look at, look at the amount of hands raised. And it confirms that literally 10% of the anglers catches 90% of our fish. And you see it based on information. Simple survey like this, it kind of tells you. But I'm going to go really deep because if you cannot digest what I'm telling you about tides, it's, it's rule 101. You've got to know this to move on. Because once you break that, you will figure out that magical window. The probability of you connecting to big fish on a consistent level, and you're going to fish less because you're setting a time. As you see, part of this is, going to, is like making a date with a fish. It sounds ridiculous, but you are actually doing that. No different when uh, Jesse got a 56 inch big snook. It was pre-calculated, determinized, and we got that fish. The young kids, it was all determined. The striped bass that I caught around here, it was on the moon tide, but it has everything to do with tides. All right, are we okay with this? All right, I'm gonna run this down because this is, this is an intense topic. I've given a lot of uh, seminars about how to fish lures, how to fish moon tides, how to fish certain patterns, but it all boils down to when to catch these fish. There are 24 hours in each tide here, folks. Just hear me out. 24 hours, I'm not gonna tell you the moon, I'm not gonna tell you about the winds, because it does have a lot of effect. But once you figure out the tide, that's the basic fundamentals. And once you figure this out, everything will click, will click. Obviously you need to know about patterns. Obviously you need to know about how to find spots, which I'm going to cover it. But you have to remember, within 24 hours, everybody, okay, raise your hand. How many of you guys have been to my previous seminar? Just raise your hands. Okay, this is good. Because I'm gonna regurgitate a lot of stuff, but I'm gonna make it really fast, all right? Hands down, and I've always said, and I will live and die by it, fish near that slack water. My God, I am telling you, what I've learned from all the over 50 years of my logging, that's a lot of logging, a lot. And I've broken down to where all these big fish are caught, what kind of window, what part of the tide. And I pulled all the big fish, and it always says near that slack water. Near that slack water means tide. There are four magical windows in a day. Four. And if, once you figure this thing out, you're gonna get crazy and then figure out, I got this window down, oh my God, I got, oh yeah, I'm gonna wait another six hours for another window. Okay, but you can actually stretch that window to another closed window, but I'm gonna backtrack this because this is gonna be too crazy. Now, you, are you okay with the four ties? Yes, just raise your hand, because I'm just gonna run through it. All right, those of you who are not, just be honest, just raise your hand. Good, the four ties is you have, you have the near high slack. Hear me out, near high slack, 
near low slack. You guys got that? You have six hours within 24 hours. You have two day, daylights and two nights. The way I fish is the terminology that I call non-human hours. And when everybody says, oh my God, I've heard of that. That's, that's slime. What, what is that supposed to mean? Non-human hours. It's very simple. The time that people are sleeping and dreaming about their fish, there's always somebody out there catching the dream fish. It sounds bold, but it's true. And I want you to be that. I'm not asking you to lose sleep, because the more you know, you will be crazy. <clears throat> you will go nuts. You're gonna figure out, oh my God, I gotta catch more fish, I gotta catch this, I gotta figure out this type. I got this type, I wanna catch another one, I'm gonna duplicate. And when you start duplicating, when you start figuring out, oh my God, there's a pattern to this. I got to tell you something, and I mean it sincerely. All these big fish, all these pattern, it holds true no matter what kind of big fish. Think about this. So it's not just striped bass. Although we love our striped bass, and I've been chasing striped bass all my life, so you can apply that. But just keep this in mind. What you learn, what you know about this tide, you can apply to multiple species, and it's going to be absolutely deadly. Tide phases. All right, four tides, four tides. And when I say near that slack water, now how many of you guys chunk? Raise your hand. How many of you are strictly lure fishermen? Two hands on one person. Oh, that's dangerous. How many of you do both? How many of you do both? I want all of you to raise your hands because, you know, it doesn't matter. Do not be a one-dimensional fisherman, folks. And I'll tell you, I fish both. And there's a finite window for artificial and a very finite window to play dirty. And you can maximize your time. Now think, I'm just gonna run it through so you have a good idea of the way I think. There's a storm coming in. Ooh, that's good. When the storm is coming in near that slack water, I can guarantee you, those fish will chew their heads off. Now, now listen carefully, please. I'm gonna, I'm gonna zoom in. That tide is always around near slack. Optimistic weather. If there's a storm coming in, if the water is somewhat green, my God, Stop everything that you're doing. Tell your boss you gotta go to the bathroom really bad for a few hours and just disappear because the bite is gonna be really good. And they will chew because, you know, human, the first thing, natural thing that they do, they stock up, they, they clean up the supermarket. All the waters, all the canned foods and all that stuff. Guess what, fish, they do the same thing. That's a matter of survival. That's instinctual. You guys kinda get the, this correlation here? And that's what it is. Now, when the water is dirty, <clears throat> then what? Oh, the water's too dirty, I'm not gonna fish it, but they're not fish enough. Dude, go play dirty. And what I mean is, if you're gonna see bait, save your bait, you have that finite artificial guys out there, catch on that magical window, and if it's near that slack water, oh my God, it is stupid. When I say it's stupid, it is stupid fishing. So when you always concentrate, now hear, hear me out, near that slack water, that is almost a guarantee. When I say almost guarantee, it's because there are variables that's gonna change on your, the way you fish. The variable meaning, okay, the wind. But I'm not gonna talk about the wind because I, I just gonna talk about how wind affects the water and so forth. But I'm breaking it down for that magical window because once you figure out the magical window, I'm telling you, you're gonna go home. Very happy. When the water's dirty, you play dirty, those fish will turn into their sense of smell. You give them bait. Do not think, oh, bait is cheating. I can tell you right now, bait fishing, bait management is a lot more difficult than plug fishing. A lot more. And I don't have to tell you about how to keep it, you know, when you have your fresh bunker, you gotta know your, your, your local bait shops. But if you have fresh, you know, 
Make sure it's fresh. Make sure when, they, when you see all that goodness, all that gooey, all that slimy stuff, that's the good stuff. Never buy, and they're gonna kill me, never buy frozen date, fresh frozen. There's no such thing as that. The ingredients, the key is in the slime. Are we okay with this? Can you just clarify better slack water? Thank you. Can I clarify slack water? I'm glad you asked me that question. All right. For those of you who actually pay attention to the weatherman or you follow your tie charts, when you look at the tie chart and it says high tide, low tide, you guys see that, right? right? High tide, low tide. Do not fish those tides. Do not. Basically, high tides and low tides, those are the key tide phases for commercial navigational purpose. They don't care about us fishermen. It's for that, and needless to say, are the times that you do not fish. What I'm asking you to do, now pay really close attention to this. I am asking you to add two and a half hours or two and a half hours before. Somebody's getting happy over there. Is there something you want to share with us? You're going like, that's awesome. Did you hear me? Two and a half hours before, two and a half hours after, because the two and a half hours after the high tide is near slack water near high slack. The other one is actually less, two and a half hours because it's going to be the low tide coming in. So we remember that four hours, okay, here we go. This is the tide chart that goes up and down, up and down, up and down. When it goes up, the water is moving at the strongest point. You guys get that? When it goes all the way down here, this is the lowest, strongest point. You want to be in the middle. Got that? <clears throat> You're saying fish slack time is what you said. I said, I said fish near that slack water. <laughs> Listen carefully. Because they're all, oh, yeah, oh, yeah, you said slack water, I didn't catch anything. I'll bet you were using lures, you didn't catch anything. Yeah, how would you know that? But if you switched over to chunky, the biggest of the biggest will come in at that window. You guys get that? And I don't have to tell you because near slack water, that's a transitional period. Transitional period where the fish is going to go to a. You see the jetty up there? Back bays and certainly hard structure, and you have soft structure. There's a reason why I actually broke these three images down for you. Oh, it's just an image. All well, I just see is beautiful white water. Dude, I'm telling you. That top one over there, just, ooh, thank you. That top one over there, you see that turbulence? You guys see that turbulence there? That turbulence means oxygen. That turbulence means there's going to be a drop. That turbulence means that on the undertow, there's gonna be push anything on the bottom and there's gonna be mama cows over there waiting for it. Because it disorient bait fish, it hits that white point, fish is going like this and the batch is going and they're back. That soft structure, that is my hands down, bar none, favorite place to fish. The reason why being, because it's always changing. You have to have a trained eye, because if you see white water, and you see calm, see that walk to the right side of it? White water, calm, it tells me when the water breaks, there's a hole there. Look for that, and when you find it, don't tell anybody. <laughs> <laughs> Moving along with the hard structure meaning jetty. Oh, hello. Oh, stop that. Stop teasing. <laughs> this here is a jetty. It could be the back base of Fire Island. It looks very much like sore thumb. It could be Shinnecock, it could be Mauritius, East, or it could be on the West. You guys get, you see what I'm talking about? 
I'm talking about local water here. And it's not a secret spot, but the secret is when. The secret is how, when to attack that spot, and why these fish are there. When I say why these fish are there, we're in the fall run, folks. Now when I break this down over here, you see this rock here? In the high water, this was shot on a near low slack. On the high slack, this is covered with all water. And I don't have to tell you, hello Joey, do you mind if I, thank you. Ready? When the water is covering that rock, now listen carefully because this is gonna, this is gonna send a message home here. When the water, and you have a rock, all right, let's just say this is, this is outgoing water. This is going outgoing, all right? So theoretically, when the water is high, you're not gonna see anything. As the water drops and the current is going, you're gonna see turbulence here. You guys get that? You know what I'm talking about. When you see that little turbulence, hear me out very carefully. That turbulence, and there's a finite window because you are figuring out that magical window. You're gonna find out when that water is just slowly moving, that is the time to strike. You see that the water is moving just slow, not too fast. Big fish don't like to compete. That's when you want to work around it. So technically, you will fish. The fish is going to be in this area. You guys get that? Now, if it is incoming, let's just say this is incoming, and the water is going that way, and you know this fish will be facing up current. Listen carefully. These fish are always facing up current. What does that mean? That means you better know what's up current, down current, and that's how you gotta work your presentation. Let's get that. All right. Uh, now let's let's talk about making a date with that fish. Sounds ridiculous, doesn't it? It works, folks. It works repeatedly. All of the best captains that I know, they live and swear by it. And when I say they live and swear by it, that's when they really home in, they know their game, they know the fish highway. Now when I talk about fish highway, how many, raise your hand. What, do you guys know when I'm talking about fish highway, raise your hand. All right, good. A fish highway basically means from point A to point B. If you know, let's just say, all right, let's, something that everybody can relate to. Let's just say back bay, inlet. You guys get that? Back bay, you have inlet. And you see a water highway where you, if you stare at it in the daytime. And it always does pay great dividends if you spend time on the water watching, not fishing. You actually study the water. If you see from point A to point B a really dark path, that's a highway. The fish is going to be from here to there or vice versa. If you find anything in between that will be a uh, it's going to stop with a little point a little drop a little pocket a little hole if you find that or even breakers if you will that's a spot yeah. and when the water slacks this fish will from this point a to point b they will meet in between and that's a highway near that slack water those big fish they feed but they swim from one point A to point B. Near that slack water, that is that magical 20 to 30 minute window. You are literally figuring out when they're going to eat, and they do eat. Trust me when I tell you this. They do feed near the slack water. High slack water, low slack water. There's two parts. How do you know which part of the slack water it is? It all depends on the current. It all depends on the structure. If it is a drop, all right, let's just say that this is a beach and you see this drop here. You guys see this, right? This is a hole here. This is shallow. The water's going here. I don't have to tell. This, the water's going there. The fish is going to be here. Yes? All right. And those of, those of you who like lure fishing, when the water is moving at a decent, a decent pace, to allow it to sweep this fish, grab it and go back in. Mm. Ah, wow, what a concept. 
You guys okay with that? Now, picture this. Now, on the opposite side, now, if the one's going this way, same structure, one's going this way, this is not a pocket anymore. You guys get it? So, what happens if this is an outgoing pocket? You know it's going to work here because the fish is look up, grab, and go back in. This is only this part of the tide. Got, got that? Now let's just say there's an opposite tide. Guess what? You, you go miles along or you figure out. Now suddenly you have something like this. Now if the water, if this is outgoing and this is incoming, the water's going this way, you know these fish are not going to be here because they're not going to be, it's like, oh my god, I'm, I'm too big, I'm too fat, I'm too old, and I can't fight the current. So they're gonna, obviously going to find another spot that's going to be here. Because they're going to hold here what is moving, baby cats passing. So this would be the opposite part of the tide. You guys got that? Great way to figure that out is when you're looking in the daylight, daytime, moon tides, high moon, full moon, all right? Everything is right before you in the daylight. You can see the spots. And on the new moon, okay, 15 more minutes, all right. On that new moon, check this out. And I said it all the time, four days before, four days after. I sound like a broken record, but every time everybody says, oh my God, how did you catch all those big fish? I've been doing seminars for literally over 25 years, folks. From the day one, I'm sticking to that same formula. If you find structure like this, or if you find an open beach, of open beach, and you see a white water breaking and then also an open beach. That little spot that I'm telling you right now, that is candy. That is money. That is the information. You don't talk about it. That's your house. That's your spot. And every time when there's a turbulence or heavy current didn't change the tides, heavy current, that's gone. Then what you do, you program yourself to figure out how to find those kind of soft structures. Guys, our striped bass are hurting. I gave you, I've empowered you to catch these big fish only for you to respect and understand them. But my God, do not kill them. Those are our breeders. Despite what a lot of people, despite what a lot of Internet, one captain saying, don't do this, you do this, you're a beautiful person, how much I love you and all that, you know, that's what's going on. We're so divided, but don't divide yourself. You are empowered to catch this big fish. Please have a heart. Take a picture. Release her. Let everybody else, let Michael catch a world record fish. I'm going to show you a little secret. Let's just say, and you can follow your tie charts, and I guarantee you, if you follow these tie charts, you will not sleep for the entire full run. You will hate me. You're gonna have bags in your eyes, but I can assure you, when you connect to your personal best, you will thank me. Hypothetically, now let's look at here, we got Fire Island. And we have Shinnecock. And we have in between the tides. And don't, don't raise your hands on me. Here he goes. It's Tachi Montauk, folks. Yes, it's Tachi Montauk, and then we have the full migration. Let's go, let's talk about Shinnecock. Once you figure out, hypothetically, 3 o'clock in the morning, that's your near slack water. Bang! I'm on. <laughs> oh my god, six feet to her. Go. Oh man, that was a nice fish. Oh man, do I have to wait next, the next day? Next day I gotta wait another 50, 52, um, minutes so we'll catch the following tide? No, wait a minute. All right, if I put that fish in Shinnecock, I'm gonna go to reach it because it, all right, if it's around three o'clock to four o'clock, 4.30, all right, so that means there's a window there. Okay, there's a window. I got it. All right, I put that fish around at three o'clock. There's gonna be a window around 4.15. 4.15, that means I gotta, I gotta boot out, and my God, I hope the cop doesn't pull me over. So what you do is you catch that tide, you caught it, and you speed up and fish more riches. Gosh, oh my god, this is perfect. Oh, look at this. Oh, this is great. Let it go. Oh, that was great. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait, 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 wait. 
There's Fire Island. Let me check the tide again. Oh, it's like 5.15. Oh my god, I better hurry up and fish that tide again. You guys get it when I'm, you see what I'm talking about? It works. They didn't call me crazy because I love to fish. Because the way I think. Because that's a pattern. I learned to figure out the pattern. If I miss the bite and then I'll have to leave. And that's how you set your schedule. You guys get that? That's how you set your schedule. That's how you set your pattern. So no, maybe you don't have the energy all the time or before the boss fires you, all right? Or if you're not, I mean, if you're for all reasons. And what I used to do is, I was an executive at Tribune, part of the WPIX. I was one of the directors. People don't know that. All my meetings were scheduled around tides. <laughs> I swear to God. <laughs> But I'm here to motivate you guys how to catch this big fish. I'm always available via social media. You can find me on Instagram. You can find me on Facebook. Send me a private message. Do not ask me where. Ask me how.